te causan hacer cosas de una manera. I've seen it throughout the years. A religious person, a religious person, and a religious individual will react to certain situations, whether in a congregation or outside of these walls, in a religious way. Una persona renacida, a born-again person, in the name of Jesus Christ, a son of God, no nada más bautista, no nada más pentecoste, no nada más asamblea de Dios. You can put any denominational title behind your name if you want. That's okay by me. But I'm going to tell you something. A religious person will live a certain way and expect things a certain way. But a born again person, una persona renacida de nueva, va a actuar, moverse, cantar, chiflar, y hacer todo lo que hace de una manera espiritual. Amen? Amen. That's what I see. That's what I see here. I see humility. Yo, yo, miro, yo miro aquí a personas humildes. Right? And that's good. Eso es bueno. Now, I want you, if you will, would you stand with me, please, por favor? Nos ponemos en pie in honor of the reading of God's Word. And if you have your Bible, would you turn with me to the letter of James. James chapter 1. Si usted trae su Biblia o no la trae, maybe your telephone, your device, because we do that nowadays. Brother Paul, right there. If you will look at the letter of James, chapter 1. Santiago, el capítulo 1, y el verso 27. Only that verse. Santiago 1, 27. James 127 and it reads like this lo voy a leer en español and then brother Paul would you do the honor to read it for me in English okay you don't have it okay brother okay but let me read it in Spanish first and I'm reading from the new living translation in español Santiago 127 dice así la religión pura y verdadera a los ojos de Dios Padre consiste en ocuparse de los huérfanos. Amen. That moves me. De los huérfanos y de las viudas en sus aflicciones y no dejar que el mundo lo corrompa. Brother Paul in English. Yes, Change chapter 1 verse 27. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction, and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Amen. Thank you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your written word. Thank you, Father, that through the power of the Holy Spirit, the word is alive in us. Padre, gracias por tu palabra escrita. Gracias que es inspirada por el Espíritu Santo y que esta palabra, Señor, habita entre nosotros. And so this morning, Heavenly Father, all I ask of you, Father, is make me your servant. Your servant to preach this word for your honor. In the name of Jesus and the church said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I have declared the words that I'm about to say a bunch of times. Let me just kind of get a little West Texas on you. It doesn't matter if the grammar is 100% okay or not, right? We're in West Texas. No damos allá en DFW. Which I don't really care for. But anyway, aquí en West Texas, in the big country, right? Yo he declarado estas palabras muchísimas veces. Y las palabras son estas. Yo todavía creo que Jesucristo pronto viene. Amen. 
Did you hear that? Yo todavía creo que Jesucristo, el Hijo de Dios, pronto viene. I believe, I'll declare it again, as I have declared it many, many times, I will declare to you today that I still believe that Jesus Christ is coming very soon. Amen. If you believe that, would you say amen? Amen. amen. He's coming soon, brother, you're right. You know the apostles? <clears throat> In the first century, we're saying, prepare yourself because Jesus is coming soon. From the very first century, desde el primer siglo, los apóstolos estaban anunciando, prepárate porque Jesucristo pronto viene. What's the matter? What's the matter with Paul Mara? ¿Qué ha pasado? Jesucristo no ha regresado. But you want to know something? That does not change that I still believe that he is coming very soon. Amen. Pronto viene. Be prepared. Preparate. Be prepared. Now watch. We as humanity, como humanos, whenever it comes down to heeding to warnings, we haven't done a real good job at it. Let's just face it. A large population, I dare to say, the majority of the world population, or even here in the United States of America, or maybe even here in the big country, or in DFW, or here in Anderson, when it comes down to warning signs, we have not done so good of a job to heat. Nosotros, como humanos, mundialmente, o estatalmente, nacionalmente, o aquí mismo en Ensen, la mayoría de la gente, cuando se trata de advertencias, no hemos hecho muy buen trabajo en responder sobre advertencias. Take for example, all of us, or the majority of here, we're parents. Some of us, blessed to be grandparents. How many times, cuántas veces le has dicho, o le dijiste a tus hijos, a un niño, don't be jumping on the bed because you're going to break your head. Right? I didn't know I could rhyme. <laughs> All right. Cuántas veces aquí nosotros, verdad, como padres, como abuelos, ¿Verdad? Le hemos dicho a los niños, notes el brinque, brinque, porque se suben en una cama, en el colchón, brinque, brinque, brinque. Do they listen? Most of the time, no, right? Le siguen, le siguen, le siguen. Right? And then what happens? Just like the monkey, it's too late, you bust your head. Right? There's something like that, right? The little monkey jumping on the bed. You know where I'm going with this, but anyway. <laughs> We don't listen. No escuchamos, no entendemos. I wanted to use the technology of these monitor or the monitor there, right? But the file couldn't work, the brother tried. But I wanted to share, and I want to share a few, um, maybe just a couple, because for the lack of time, uh, a warning that happened uh, in Peru. And Peru, Sur America, in Peru, South America. I believe it was in the 1970s. I may not have my date exactly straight. Pero me parece que en el 1970, ahí por ahí dentro de ese años, there was two individuals, había dos individuos, allá en Peru, que estaban dando una advertencia, Brother Paul, I don't know how you say glacier in Spanish, pero uh, hielo, verdad, de las montañas, verdad. Estaban dando unas advertencias de que ese hielo, verdad, que estaba en las montañas, de repente se iba a hacer un resbalo. An avalanche was going to happen because it had happened before. And these two individuals were warning 
time after time. They say, look, historically, this has happened here before. It's going to happen. <coughs> our estimate, our knowledge of this is showing that it could happen at any moment. Puede acontecer este resbalo, this avalanche of, of ice, I think known as the 511 avalanche glacier in Peru. These two individuals warned time after time, estos dos individuos, estaban dando esa advertencia. So much they were warning the people that it caused a lot of panic. Tanto que les estaban dando esa advertencia, verdad, a la gente que les causó pánico. To the degree where the authorities put those individuals in jail. Al grado de que tanto pánico causó la advertencia y el anuncio de ellos que se llegó al punto que los encarcelaron a esos dos individuos porque les estaban diciendo que ese resbalo va a acontecer causó mucho pánico los encarcelaron brother Paul they put him in jail but you know what the day came se llegó el día the avalanche it buried about 25,000 people alive. Este resbalo de hielo que le estaba dando la advertencia que hay que hacer algo de repente sucedió, brother. It happened. Y enterró vivos como 25,000 personas o más. Why? They didn't listen to the warning. No estaban escuchando la advertencia. Now you hold that thought. You got 9-11? World War II? La Segunda Guerra Mundial? September 2001, was it? 9-11? You got a lot of other things that people, the crash of two, financial crash of 2008? Financial disaster, el año 2000, uh, financiero, ¿verdad? De los Estados Unidos aquí. Greedy people that are still in power, by the way, running financial ways within Washington, D.C. And you know why I bring that up? Because I spent about 20 something years with two of the biggest banks. Yo he gastado en trabajo con dos de los bancos mundiales más grandes del mundo. And, and I got to see the hurt. A mí me tocó ver y leer historias de gente lastimadas cuando le estaban dando advertencia de antemano, por favor, no abran estos programas de esta forma porque va a causar un desastre financiero. No hicieron caso, sucedió. My point is, we haven't been too good listening or heeding to warnings. If it's too late. I want to share with you three quick observations. Brother Luke, I'm going to try to conclude it by 12, but maybe just slightly a little over. Ahora que, que, que termina las 12. Si me paso, no quiero mucho, because I, I respect your time. Yo respeto el tiempo de ustedes. But look, before I go into some points, antes de entrar a unos observaciones or points, if you will, I want to share about the writer of this letter. James, Santiago. You know, some theologians, algunos escolares, they said he was the half-brother of Jesus Christ. Algunos escolares, teologos, dicen que él era medio hermano de Jesucristo. And there's some discussion and some back and forth that, no, this is a different James. So hay discusión sobre eso. Right? But James... This James that wrote this letter, este Santiago que escribió esta carta, su fe en el Señor Jesucristo estaba tan firme que él estaba dispuesto a hacer y recibir persecución aún hasta morir. Yeah. James, the writer of this letter, was writing to the 12 tribes of Israel. How do I know that? Because it says it in the scripture. Él estaba escribiendo a las doce tribus de Israel. Pero este siervo del Señor 
estaba su fe tan firme en el Señor Jesucristo que él estaba dispuesto a recibir persecución aún hasta la muerte. Are you willing to die for Jesus? ¿Estamos nosotros morir para Cristo? That's a tough one, right? That's difícil. I don't want to lie to you and say, well, of course I'll give my life. I really don't want to. I'd rather not. But, hey, we're in an age. Estamos en una edad. Things are changing. God bless America, right? But America sometimes is opens up itself for the hand of God draws away. God has not left us. Dios no nos ha dejado, pero tenemos que tener cuidado. Mm -hmm. But are you willing to die for Jesus? ¿Está usted dispuesto a morir para Jesucristo? That's a tough one. James was willing to die for the cause of Jesus Christ. Now watch. The Pharisees, the Sadducees, the religious sects, los, los religiosos, los fariseos, did you remember my comment at the beginning? Religiosity will cause you to react a certain way. Los religiosos fariseos y saduceos, brother Lupe, tenían tanta envidia de este Santiago porque él estaba firme en Jesucristo. No le importaba. He didn't care if he had to die for Jesus. His faith was so firm that the Pharisees, Brother Lupe, the Sadducees, they were so full of anger that they ordered him, James, ordenaron a Santiago to be taken to the highest pinnacle of the temple in that day and say, throw him down. We want to kill him. Tanto era el odio de los religiosos, not all the Sadducees and the Pharisees, they meant well. The Pharisees, they meant well. Sus intenciones eran buenas, pero por ser tan religiosos, no actuaban como personas que son renacidas. Y tanto les dio el coraje con Santiago que lo ordenaron, brother, que fuera llevado a, 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 a lo mero alto del el pináculo del templo en ese día, a que fuera arrojado para abajo para que lo matara. And did you know the scholars tell us that's exactly what happened? There's historians of the century writings that they have discovered to this day. Don't take my word for it. No tome usted mi palabra. Escribíñelo. Historiadores que escribieron sobre eso nos dicen que lo llevaron al pináculo del templo, lo arrojaron abajo, pero no murió. I imagine a lot of his bones were broken and he was bruised and hurt very badly. Me imagino que, que fue lastimado muy gravemente, pero no murió. Entonces, como no murió el instante allí, al haber sido arrojado para abajo, comenzaron a aventarle piedras. They started stoning him. Stoning him. Como muchos hoy en día. Arrojamos religiosamente piedras. You write a poem. I don't want to offend anyone. They hurt too, right? Yeah. We cast stones to people. Sometimes we don't show up, and that's a way of casting a stone. Sometimes we don't know how to be committed. That's a way of casting stones. A veces no queremos hacer compromiso. Ay, que el hermano, la, ay, que el pastor. Y te arrojamos. Amen or ouch? It's true, right? It's cierto. But look, watch. He didn't die. So empezaron a arrojarle piedras. Y aún todavía dicen los historiadores. The historians tell us that he still would not die. I would imagine that would only be a supernatural intervention of God. Yo me imagino, hermanos, si puedo, tengo que creer que a lo mejor, si eso fue la mano de Dios, que todavía no murió. So then, historians tell us, 
that an individual from that crowd took what's called a fuller's club. Tomó como, lo puedo explicar como un bate así más o menos, pero como una vara así, pero un forma de bate, that I believe trades people would use it in carpentry and other trades in that day, o que trabajaban con fierro, ¿verdad? En esos días, ¿verdad? Tomó uno de esos fierros, uno de esos bates, y le dio en la cabeza, le rompió la cabeza, and this sounds gross, but I, I want to share it with you to bring my point. Busted the head open, and his brains gushed out. Y disculpa que se oye grosero, and he died. Esa era la persecución que los apóstoles estaban dispuestos a sufrir. Gracias a Dios que nosotros no hemos experimentado y ojalá que nunca experimentemos eso. But why do I share that with you? ¿Por qué te doy esta información? Yo quiero que usted entienda que ser religioso te hace hacer cosas de una manera, ser renacido de otra manera. Where are you? ¿Dónde está usted? Silvia, mi prima, when we talk about our tía, it was about a week and a half ago, maybe two weeks now. I got to preach this word at another place. And it was at the time that I barely heard the news through my mom that Tia was going through this. We have an aunt who lives in Hamlin that is going through a very critical situation. Physically, right? Due to an illness. That's all I want to say. But Sylvia Prima, when I heard that news, cuando yo oí esa palabra, I had just preached, había yo predicado la religión pura y verdadera a los ojos de Dios Padre consiste en qué? En ocuparse. ¿Con quién? Con el huérfano. ¿Con quién más? Y la viuda. ¿En qué condición? En sus angustias. Ah, when I heard that, prima, I had just preached this. I had to pick up the phone and say, Mom, pues tía, me dices tú que está pasando algo difícil. Y no sabemos, ¿verdad? El extremo todavía. We don't know the extreme, the extremity of it, right? But, nonetheless, you're telling me that It's kind of brought her down. Le, 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 le ha tumbado un poco, ¿verdad? Esa noticia a ella. And then the Holy Spirit was telling me, Brother Paul, you're preaching the pure and true religion is he who helps the orphan and the widow. In what? One version says, in their distress. How about it, Robert? Es una tía. Ya no tiene esposo. She's a widow, right? Ya no tiene esposo, so es viuda. Sí, tiene el soporte de hijos y familia, pero es viuda. ¿Qué vas a hacer? ¿Vas a predicar tú acá afuera a todo el mundo? Are you going to preach all over the world or, or wherever? But you've got a man that's in distress. That's a need that is hurting. The needs of lifting. Que necesita, verdad, algo de ánimo. Que necesita alguna palabra de mom. You know what? You want to pack your bags, mom? I'll take you over there. And my mom's in her early 80s. Well, son, that's where the, this came about. It got real rainy. I mean, we've had a lot of rain, right? Even in, in DFW, right? Muchísima agua hemos tenido. Uh, si se bueno, vamos, hijo, okay. 
But then the rain, y ya después sus dolores de hueso, ¿no? la tinta es esto, no tinta. Hijo, yo no quiero ir, ¿verdad? Cuando está así el tiempo frío. So, okay, well, it's okay. It's all right. So, maybe we can plan after this rain and the weather gets a little better. Here we are. The weather got a little better. Here we are. And here I am. So long. Aquí estoy yo con ustedes, hermanos. Un honor de compartir esta humilde palabra. And I'm going to go real quickly now because the time is running out. La observación uno que yo recibo de leer esta escritura es número uno. Tenemos que vivir un testimonio puro. We must live a pure testimony. But how can you live a pure testimony in, in this age today? ¿Cómo puedes vivir un testimonio limpio hoy en día? As teenagers, it's tough, right? To try to live and walk your best walk because temptations are all around us, right? And not only to teenagers, but for all of us, none of us are exempt, right? Ninguno de nosotros tenemos excepción, ¿verdad? Es difícil vivir un testimonio limpio y puro. No es fácil. It's not easy. It's not easy being cheesy. I don't know why I came to that. Yeah. I, I don't know. Okay, let's see. Those of you that are recording this better read it. I'm just kidding. But no es fácil. No es fácil vivir un testimonio puro. None of you can tell me that, that, that we're all 100%. Man, we, this is life. Estamos aquí en este mundo caído. Estamos en un mundo, ¿verdad? Donde el enemigo sigue con sus ataques. And, and you know the worst enemy a lot of times? Is our own mind. El enemigo peor de nosotros más que nada es nuestra mente. Porque nos sometemos a lo que no debemos. Y mira lo que dijo Santiago en Santiago 1.21. Así que, how do you live a pure testimony? Dice así. Así que quiten de su vida todo lo malo y lo sucio. That's how you do it. Y acepten con humildad la palabra que Dios les ha sembrado en el corazón. Porque tiene el poder para salvar tu alma. That's how you live a pure testimony. Do away with all filth, says James. Observation number two. Observación número dos. I had a lot more to say, brother, but maybe on a different occasion. Punto dos, observación dos. Live to be a blessing. Vive para ser una bendición. But again, I ask, brother Paul, how can we live to be a blessing to people? ¿Cómo podemos vivir para ser bendición a alguien? Brother Star, I, I call him Star. How can we live to be a blessing to people? It, with corruptions all around us, right? Challenges, right? Struggles, tensions, you name it. It's all around us. How? People trying to cheat us left and right. People taking advantage here and there. Greedy people, all kinds, you name it. How can we live to be a blessing? I'm glad you asked. Que bueno que preguntan. Santiago 2. You were sharp, man. Por eso lo querían matar. Santiago 2 dice, Amados hermanos, ¿de qué le sirve a uno decir que tiene fe si no lo demuestran con sus acciones? How can you be a blessing? Watch this. ¿Puede esa clase de fe salvar a alguien? Supóngase, que ven a un hermano, una hermana que no tiene que comer ni con qué vestirse. And watch what, what this direct apostle or this follower of Jesus said. Y uno de ustedes le dice, Adiós. Goodbye. Que tengas buen día. Now this is scripture. James 2, 14 through 16. Que tengas buen día. Bye bye. Abrígate mucho. Cover yourself a lot. Right? Y alimentate bien. Eat. 
Eat well. Pero no le da ni alimento, ni ropa. ¿Para qué le sirve? How can you be a blessing? Do some action. Toma acción. You got it, Brother Paul. And how can you do that if you're religious? Pero ¿cómo puedes hacer eso si eres religioso? Oh, there may be someone here that can write a check of $10,000. I don't know. There may be someone here that can bring an offering of $1,000. I don't know. But if it's all religious, you know what? I would prefer people stay with their money. Don't give me what you can do. Give what you really do to honor God. So that you can really be a blessing to someone. Ouch. Well, I mean, Amen. Amen. I, I, I'm sorry. I got I to gotta preach, brother. I got to preach. Okay, ya voy a concluir. I'm, I'm going to conclude. I'm going to conclude. Or get real close. And thank you. Thank you. Really, thank you for being patient up to now. I'm about to conclude. Point number three, your observation number three. Vive en Jesucristo diariamente. Live in Jesus Christ daily. Pero como puedes vivir en Jesucristo diariamente? How can you live in Christ daily? Well, what did James tell us in the verse that we, that we read? Brother Paul, do you, do you have that scripture still open? James 1.27? Mira, te lo voy a leer en español. I'm going to ask Brother Paul again to read the last part of that verse here in a minute in English. Santiago 1.27, James 1.27. Dice así, Y no dejar que el mundo te corrompa. Así es como puedes vivir en Jesucristo diariamente. Santiago, James 1.27, the last part of that verse and where it says and refusing or whatever that version says. It says and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Amen. Again brother? And to keep ourselves unspotted from the world. I'm paraphrasing here. To keep himself unspotted from the world. Amen. Thank you brother Paul. That's how you can live in Jesus Christ daily. Brother Lupe, we can preach till we're blue in the face. But if we're religious and we want to do it, oh, look at that brother. He preaches so beautiful. Get out of here. Oh, Brother Paul, not that. But if he did it just to put a show, that's all it is, a show. But how can you really be a blessing? How can you really do the thing?